talk to me. We're very sad. <clears throat> Why? That is a four terabyte drive. And it's dead. Uh, well, <clears throat> it was <clears throat> sitting on the end of the bed in the princess suite and uh, I got off the bed and accidentally kicked it off the bed and it landed on the sole of the cabin, the floor to everyone else. And now the the drive spins up but the head won't lock into place and so it's not being recognized and so that's four terabytes worth of movies shows luckily I have the music and the photos stored on here as well but all the uh, TV shows and movies are all locked inside this device here can I just say at this point I'm so glad it so if it's already pooped already, do you think you can pull it apart and...? You can pull them apart. So I'm gonna, I mean, it is knackered, so yeah, I will pull it apart and see what I can do. Um, if I can mm -hmm. swap the head out or something, I will. Joking aside with me saying, I'm so glad it wasn't me. Um, I do feel free because this, he put in so many hours actually getting that collection together and uh, over years really yes. didn't you yes. and uh, and we've just like we've literally just turned my princess suite into a media room for the evening so that we can watch movies and things <laughs> that's why you can't have nice things <laughs> so it's really it's a bit of a bummer really yeah but if anybody can fix it, I'm, I have total confidence that you can, though. Oh well, let's look at that this morning. No. I'll look at it later today. I've got things to do. Yeah, so cheesed off. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. let you know how it goes. Well, another day out shopping. So today we're heading to Mercia because we've still got a few things to get. I didn't get all of the arts and craft things that I need, so I'm looking for um, art and craft uh, shops. And Baz has still got some dive stuff that he's uh, wanting, so he's going back to the diving shop. And Ikea. And we're going to Ikea because we've also got some kitchen things uh, that we still need to get. Mercia, here we come. Mercia, you're a fantastic town for shopping. So that quick trip into Ikea actually turned out to be a huge trip through Ikea. I don't know if you've ever been into an Ikea, but they've got it laid out with a, a, an arrow system on the floor. And basically, the arrow system, you follow the pathway through the whole store. And it's a great way of selling things. Obviously, it works for them because you have to go through the whole store. We did find some secret doorways that we went through to try and miss sections out, but we were still in there for, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes or so and we were only buying three things, but that's how long it takes to get through the store, get processed through the checkout. Anyway, that was our daily workout, 10,000 steps in Ikea. Now we're in a new shopping center where hopefully, fingers crossed, and she gets her art supplies. Okay, I found Cobalt, or Cobalto, which is the art place in Mercia, and from just the window, it looks like I've come to the right place. So let's have a look, see what they've got.
I'm the first to admit that I know nothing about painting and colours and all that sort of stuff. I find it difficult to paint a fence. It's not true. We actually did very well painting our house. But when it comes to artist painting and colours and paints and stuff and brushes, don't know a thing about it. So I've decided to sit out here in the uh, central walkway while Ancha goes through her long list and spends as much time as she needs in the art shop without trying to get me involved. Are you set? Yeah, I'm set. I'm set. Whew. So I can paint. I can paint, I can draw, I can do all that kind of stuff. Still haven't got any crafting stuff because they are a um, purely for artists, but their stuff is beautiful. And I've got a really nice little compact um, easel, <laughs> which is great, which goes on the desk, and it's got some paints in it. <laughs> So it's after lunch time now. Um, we're just going to head over there to Leroy Merlin, which is the um, hardware store, and see if we can get some bungee cords. And then after that, I think it's time to head back to the boat. So we just got out of the taxi um, that dropped us off from uh, returning the rented car. It only cost us 15 euros coming back to the marina, whereas two weeks ago the other taxi that took us from the marina to the rented car place cost 25 euros. Go figure. So today is Saturday. Um, we are now pretty much stuck in the marina. We've done a lot of shopping. Um, so we're really just going to chill out now because Two weeks of solid shopping is just... <laughs> tiring <laughs> <It's> as! Tiring. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get, we've got some things to put away that we bought earlier on this morning before we took the car back. Mm. Then we're just going to open a bottle of wine or a cold beer and sit on the back and just yeah. go, it's the weekend, yeah. chill time. Yeah. Have a nice chicken salad. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. I think um, it was fun, the shopping was fun to start with because it was, you know, new. But honestly, after two weeks worth, oh, over, over it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yesterday evening, as I was browsing through boating channels on YouTube, I noticed quite a lot of the people who were mostly in marinas, like this one, um, were, when they were cooking, they were using a hot plate. So, seeing as we don't actually have to pay for electricity here, it's all inclusive in the 800 euros a month marina berth cost. Um, it seems rather silly that we're actually using our gas to cook with when we could be using the electric that we're getting for free or included in the price anyway. So today we went and bought one of these. So let's open it up and take a look. I'm sure it's not too complicated. I'm sure it's pretty much a plug and play device. Um, but this will certainly help save gas, which I have also read is hard to come by in some areas. So by using this, we keep our gas until we absolutely need to use it. It is made of stainless steel, which is good, because you want that on a, on a boat, um, because of the saltwater environment. So that's it, very simple. Uh, a big hob and a little hob, 1000 watts, 1500 watts, and variable uh, temperature controls on the front for each one and very much simple to use plug and play the way i like it so we just used this for the very first time this um, hot plate and i have to say i'm very impressed with the amount of heat it puts out even the smaller 1000 watt uh, element um, heats up really quickly and it also um, you know pounds out a lot of heat uh, I turned it up to 11, well I think it only goes up to 5, but you know what I mean, um, on the first go thinking it might need a bit of welly, but I had to turn it down, we were sautéing some onions and they started to burn, so it really pounds it out. Uh, we've already cooked lunch on it, I'm now using um, the rest of the uh, minced meat that I've mixed up with herbs and spices, and I'm going to make some meatballs and we're going to put those into a tomato sauce and have them with pasta for dinner later on. 
Today's the day we decided that we're finally going to put our suitcases away. Uh, we're going to store them under the V-berth uh, front uh, bed. They were living in this um, aft cabin, but really, even though nobody's actually going to be using it for some time, uh, we wanted to make it as clean as possible. We didn't want to try and turn it into the garage because once you go down that slippery slope, it stays that way. So we finally moved the bags out of here. A um, few more bits and pieces to clean up and we're going to move them forward. Now that means Ansha's mattresses come out and have to be here for now. Of course, we've opened up the Found out that it needs cleaning. <laughs> Hello. Got your head in another locker. Yes. Welcome to the master suite. <laughs> this is what the bed looks like underneath. It's got lots of hidey holes in here. Yeah. And this is one of them. Here, let me show them. See that one? It's fairly clean and it's dry although we are going to put our things in um yeah we'll wrap them in a plastic bag yeah. or something to uh just in case water yeah. sloshes in somewhere when we're on passage yeah i'm not sure how many you have to get in there yeah. <laughs> hopefully we'll get at least two would be nice Well, let's have a look underneath the bed where the batteries are. Yes. In the aft port. Yeah, because may, it, it may be because a lot of this space is taken up by the water tanks. Mm. So it may be that the other bed has got more yeah. more length. What is this? It's a first aid kit. Oh, that's probably out of date. But we can certainly, we're not going to get them in here. We're going to throw all of this, but we can certainly. Um, yeah, that's not going to be. Not going to get them in here either. <sighs> Let's go to the forward locker. I think we're going to win. <laughs> If I can lay them all on top of each other, that would be a bonus. Yeah. Who'd have thought that trying to find somewhere to store four suitcases would be this bloody difficult? So I finally figured out what this was. Um, in the Mediterranean, most of the mooring is stern two, and sometimes the dock is higher or lower than the back end of your boat, so it makes, makes getting off difficult. So we have what's called a passerelle, which basically is like a gangplank that runs from the back end of the boat up to the dock. And we've been across, across a few passerelles that are a bit... Ooh. Especially that bendy wooden one. Yeah. That was like scary. So this, uh, in one side of the passerelle, there's, there's two holes. And these uh, spikes go into the hole, and this acts as a uh, handrail spread out along the length of the passerelle. So now we know what that and is. And you can also play tennis. Um, while you're going across. Sure. <laughs> so we're going to stir that here. Lovely, lovely. Good. Okay, let's go and put the boat back together. Okay. I love these. So love these overalls. <laughs> they are 
they are so well made. They're really good make. They're Helly Henderson. And they just have millions of pockets. Look, they've got these things. Look, pockets for everything. And even in the pockets are linings with for extra tools. And this is the same. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? Never thought I'd get excited by overalls, people. Anyway, let's put these in here. And then I'll show you what else this has. So it also has um, pockets in the knees, but it's not really to store stuff. It's for the cushioning. So I can slam down on the deck or even kneel when, when I need to do scrubbing or anything. And my knees happy. So now they're the right length, I can wear them. <laughs> How good is that? Next week on Sailing ABC we get the mast and new standing rigging installed and we put in a whole heap of effort to get rid of black mould off the hatches. So if you've liked this episode give us a thumbs up subscribe and do leave a comment because we love to hear what you have to say.